everybody. Um, my name's Deborah, and I'm a, one of those people who do work in the labs. <laughs> I'm a laboratory manager at Ensto. Oops. So Ensto, or the Australian Nuclear Science and Technology Organisation, as we used to be known, um, we're a public research organisation, and we have three main campuses, our main one at Lucas Heights, uh, one just outside of the city here at Camperdown, and um, just recently we have purchased the Australian Synchrotron down in Clayton in Melbourne. Um, ANSTO employs many, many um, people across the STEM careers. Uh, we have many areas of research that we're interested in. Uh, a lot of this work is done by our own scientists and engineers at our campuses. Uh, a lot of it is also done in consultation and collaboration with a lot of industry, um, both here in Australia and internationally as well. The particular division that I work for at ANSTO is the Australian Centre for Neutron Scattering. So we're a little bit different in that uh, we actually provide a facility with a range of um, instruments that utilise neutrons to investigate different materials. So rather than actually doing the science ourselves, we actually provide the facility for um, researchers and scientists from universities and industry across Australia and from around the world to come and actually do their science. So we're sort of science facilitators in a way. I find it very, very interesting. Um, we have people come to do work with us that will be looking at things like DNA, proteins, how different drugs will interact with that so they can um, create new drugs of the future. Uh, we also have scientists coming to do work looking at um, new generation of battery materials or energy storage devices. Um, we have people that come to look at stress and strain, strain fractures in bridges and aircraft and rockets. We work with NASA. Um, and we also have people that bring in fossils from 80 billion years ago uh, and things like that. So every single day at work is very, very different uh, and it's definitely very, very enjoyable. So to be able to provide this facility, um, we employ a range of scientists from very different backgrounds, physics, chemistry, biology, to actually run our instruments. Uh, they also collaborate with the scientists who come to use our facilities. And then we also have our operations team as well, where we uh, also have scientists, material scientists, uh, myself as a chemist, and we also have a range of mechanical and electrical engineers who need to help build and maintain the instruments that we use. Um, and we also use software programmers to be able to run all those instruments as well. So there's definitely a wide range of people that I get to work with every day and a big um, wide range of science as well. So how do I end up becoming a lab manager at ANSTO? Well, my STEM career actually started at the Uni of Newcastle. Um, when I first finished school, I wanted to become a chemical engineer. I did that for 12 months and absolutely hated it. <laughs> so I then took 10 months off, uh, sorry, 10 years off. Um, so I'm one of those mature age students. So for 10 years, I actually worked in customer service management in the hospitality industry, um, insurance, things like that. But as I got towards 30, um, maybe had a midlife crisis and decided that I'd still wanted to have my degree. So I decided to go back to uni and do a Bachelor of Science, major in chemistry, and I thought, I'll just have my degree for the sake of it. No one's going to employ an over 30-something to go and start working in the labs. So I went and did my science degree, fell back in love with science, and then started doing summer projects. And that's one of my first tips. Make sure you get as much experience as you can. Talk to your professors and see what type of projects they can offer you. So I did some projects looking at solar cells. I then went on and did an honours year looking at battery materials. I then went on and did my PhD. Um, during my PhD, I actually spent time working at ANSTO using the nuclear techniques, the neutron techniques, and I also had the opportunity every July and August to travel to Europe for two months and work in labs in London, in Stockholm, and in Berlin. After I finished my PhD, I went on to become a postdoc researcher at Stockholm, in Stockholm. Um, Stockholm's a little bit different when I arrived in February as compared to working there in the summertime. I ended up spending six years in Sweden, um, managing projects and our collaboration with L'Oreal, looking at hair and skin products. It was then time to come back to Australia, 
um, where I then decided to combine my research skills with my customer service management skills and went on to become a lab manager. So please come and have a talk to me afterwards and I'll be um, more than happy to talk about ways that you can use all those transferable skills um, to, to help your career. Okay, so I'll now hand over to Karen from Ansto. Mm -hmm.